I am here. It is Wednesday. I did not do Talk About It Tuesday this week. I kind of feel like I covered all my steps and challenges in other videos. I do want to talk about self-sabotage and how that relates to my idea of rewarding yourself, but I think that should come next week. So today the story is I woke up really sick. Last night I had a fairly high fever. This morning I woke up, I still don't feel well. And so what I'm going to do today is attempt to make a Hyzentra video. Now Hyzentra is basically subcutaneous immunoglobulin that I give myself. It's a foresight infusion that I do once a week and I've been a little negligent on that front which could be the reason why I've been so sick. At any rate, I was supposed to go to the hospital today and get my Remicade infusion but I felt that it might be chancing it a little bit since I had a fever last night and my fever has been kind of like, I don't know, 99, 99.3 today. And I just don't want to make things worse. So I'm putting that off a week with the Remicade. I'm on a fairly high dose. I'm on seven milligrams per kilogram. So it's, it's a lot of Remicade and I get that every four weeks. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try to give my immune system a little bit of a boost, which is why I am using the immunoglobulin. I did used to get IVIG in the hospital, which was every month, I believe. But after, you know, I don't know, maybe four, five, six months, I started actually getting a septic meningitis from that. And it was starting to trigger Bichette's flares and I was having, you know, some brain swelling and a lot of eye problems, a lot of optic neuritis. So my immunologist switched me to the subcutaneous infusion that I do myself. And I did have to undergo training with a nurse for, I believe it was one or two months, just to learn how to use the equipment, how to put the needles in, etc. But I'm just gonna go over how I do this. I don't know if this is something you guys do out there who have common variable immune deficiency like I do or other kinds of immune deficiencies, but I am going to try to make this video. I know it's probably going to be a little long because it's a long infusion and it's a pretty complicated infusion. It is not quite as simple as the methotrexate shot. So this might have to be divided up, but We'll see how it goes. So I am gonna jump in the shower and get clean because as I have mentioned before, I am super, super, super clean about everything because I have had cellulitis more times than I can even remember. So I want my skin to be clean and then I scrub it down with alcohol anyway. So I'm gonna jump in the shower and then I will commence with this video. So I will see you shortly, bye. Bye. So I realize I don't have very much makeup on. I try not to wash this because I figured I would wash it off later, but the rest kind of came off anyway. And then a lot of this came off, but that's okay because this is most of the day worth of infusion time. It's kind of a long one. So we're going to go this way. And also, oh, oh, I have on basically layers and uh, just crummy clothes because I need to be comfortable and you take Benadryl with this. That was the other thing. Um, basically the same as when you get IVIG in the hospital, you take Benadryl just uh, to make sure you don't have any anaphylactic reaction. I don't know about all mail order pharmacies, but mine offers uh, you know, an EpiPen set every time I order every month. You take Benadryl, oh, and this comes back to the comfy clothes, which usually knocks me out afterwards. So I've got my hair up, nice cupcake hat on. I do needle in each leg and needle on each side of my stomach. And I will show you the leg needles, but I'm not gonna show you the stomach needles just because whatever prednisone puff I have left is all here and in my stomach. So you can also do this infusion if it's foresight, it depends on your particular infusion and mine's foresight. Um, you can also do them like right here. 
the back of your arms. But I really don't have, like, I know I kind of have big arms, but they're solid. I've got very muscular arms, I kind of always have. Even when the nurse was here, she said, I do not have enough subcutaneous fat on my arms to do infusions there. So right now, I do them in my legs and in my stomach. I wear shorts and a tank top. Usually, I'll wear a zip up the front shirt, but this one's nice and loose. We're good to go. Step number one, clean off this mess of a table. So it looks like this. That is what it looks like now. Ta-da! I hope you don't have terrible motion sickness because we're on chandelier here. Ooh, I just wanted to show you. I get two garbage back. This one is for all the garbage you will have by the end of this infusion. And I usually just hook that on whatever chair I'm working on. I might rotate just... So I can have a better camera angle. This is kind of weird. Then I take a second garbage bag. And these are all clean, by the way. Not dirty garbage bags. I put that on the table. And I will use a sterile drape. But that just kind of keeps it in place. And just acts as another barrier to any possible germ. So I have changed the angle. So the bag is here. This bag is here. I have grabbed my sharp spin. I try to keep separate sharp spins for methotrexate and hyzentra. This one is kind of a mixed bin. Like I said before, I do not know where you get the bin for cytoxic materials, which is really strange after having done methotrexate for like six years now. Right now I'm just using this one. I also have my bag of Hyzentra. This is how the delivery mail order pharmacy sends it to me. I also have my Benadryl. I get the liquid gels. They seem to work more quickly for me. So that is the beginning of the supplies. I'll get out the rest from this mess and then I'll show you. All right, just to show you the box that this comes in, they do come in, I believe, 10 gram vials as well. But for whatever reason, my insurance company only covers the 2 grams, even though I have to do 10 grams. So I have 4 plus this bottle. I'm just showing you basically what I do is check the expiration date, make sure it's good. And you'll see why this upsets me too, because there's so much waste. Now, I don't have gloves on, but I'm not uncapping these yet. So this is what the vial looks like. You want to make sure, again, it's not expired. You want to make sure the liquid is like a clear to yellowish color, but no particles of any kind. You want to keep this as unbubbly and unfoamy as possible. You don't want to shake this around. Also, you do not ever want to refrigerate or freeze this. If you do so or it comes to you that way, it's bad. You have to call the pharmacist and say it's bad and reorder because it destroys. This is basically blood plasma. So anyway, so there's my five bottles. I set another one out because sometimes if I haven't done it for, you know, two or three weeks, even though I'm supposed to do it every week, I will do an extra two grams if it will fit in the pump, which is right here in its lovely designer bag. This upsets me because each one of these boxes, so five to six boxes or whatever your dose is, comes with this huge, come on pamphlet of drug information so that's just a total waste of paper I just tossed five of these in my garbage bag and it's just a total waste and then what I do I just break this down so it's flat I set it in a pile for later and that is to shred after I am done just for privacy reasons on to the supplies I hope I have everything. First, you have your Hyzentra, whatever your dose is. Again, check the bottles to make sure the liquid is good. 
You also don't want to shake it around because it is very viscous and it will turn very bubbly and the bubbles actually do kind of turn into almost like a solid and then crack. Just try to be as gentle with it as possible. Okay, I have my nearly full sharp spin. I have my box of sterile gloves. I specifically request these. They had been sending me just a box of gloves before, but as I have mentioned several times before, I have had cellulitis, mostly from doctors. I just want everything to be as sterile as possible. So that brings us to sterile drape. Now we have a 60 ml syringe, no needle. Two needles, I always take out two in case one is a dud, which you can see that one looks a little crooked, so I always like to have two out. They also send me spikes, but I just prefer the needles. These are, I believe, 20, no, 18 gauge needles, so that's that. Okay, Precision Freedom 60 tubing, so that means for the 60 ml syringe, this is basically the attachment that goes on here and then attaches onto your needle set, which this is, what is it called? Safety Subcutaneous Tissue Infusion Set. These are actually really short. I'm really happy. I think I was getting the six millimeter ones, which were way too deep for me. I think these are four millimeter, which is perfect. Plus, they're color coded, which is even better. So that's my four sight needle set. So that's that. My pump, which I will take out in a minute. I also make sure to have tegaderms. I know there are some uh, Tegaderm-like things in here, but if I mess up or need an extra, I have them here. I request them also. I have hand sanitizer in case I need it. I highly recommend you have extra gloves just because it's better to change your gloves. I have 91% isopropyl alcohol. The higher you can find, the better. I think 91 is about the highest you can find in the pharmacy. Um, I use this to re-clean my skin. Alcohol prep pads, which I just make sure I have enough of anyway. Paper tape, because I'm allergic to regular tape for some reason. I am not allergic to latex, but I cannot use regular tape. So paper tape, I'm going to have to probably find another roll because it doesn't look like enough. And same with the gauze pad. Does not look like I have enough gauze pads to get through. So I hope that's all of the supplies. Oh, first I forgot they're hiding back here. I also have spot bandages for after the infusion. I also keep the tape and a gauze pad handy just in case I have a bleeder, but these usually do the trick. Okay, so your designer bag opens and it does have a strap that you can adjust. I do usually wear this just over my shoulder until I go to bed and I lie it next to me in the bed. So you open it up and you have your spring pump. Basically, this is, again, all matching Freedom 60. I'll show you how it works first. So there's the off on switch, off and on. So if you turn it on, you can watch Go all the way down. Like that. And click. Now, when you use it in your body, it does not go that fast. Basically, how this works is as fast as your body absorbs the medicine into your subcutaneous adipose tissue. This will go that fast, which for me is usually in the range of uh, two to four, or sometimes five or six hours, depending on how hydrated I am, which brings me to another point. Make sure you drink a lot the day before you do this and the day you do this, because the more hydrated you are, the faster this tends to go. And also, the less painful the lumps and the less lumpy the lumps tend to be. So, 
I'm going to turn this, it is off, and what you do basically to take that back up is you just screw this back up. So you just do the same thing, follow the arrows and just twist it. See how it goes up until it is at the very top again and it will stop. There you go. Hear it? Click and it won't go anymore. So that's how you know it is ready to go. So what I actually do with this, because I am paranoid, is I first move everything off of this garbage bag and then I put down the sterile drape. This bag, since it has been so many places, never goes on the drape. I hang it on the other side of the chair for when I need it. After I have all my needles in and I'm ready to go. Do after I have the sterile drape down is I actually put on a pair of gloves and scrub this down as well with alcohol and let it dry because I just, as I've mentioned, like to be extra super super careful so I'm gonna get this all set up and then you can see how I like to set it up 